back here in studio, Honorable Sosion, you are making a point, and I cut you short. Yes, I was making a point. Yeah. You, you can see the one judge dissented and, uh, and stated that the 23 positions were legally established. Mm. But looking at the complement of the head of the public service in October, it requested for 23. And there was a further compliment mm. uh, in February, that's 23rd February, requesting for 51. And that's aligning the positions to the state departments because administrations and activities and efficiencies are domiciled in the state departments. Did, and these positions, did, did I, did I yes, that? yes, that is what it is. The second compliment, mm. why 51? the chief administrative secretaries will be domiciled at the state departments for purposes of administrations at the state department. That is what it is. And that's a fact for sure. We cannot run away from that. And uh, therefore, the Public Service Commission was obligated to exercise its constitutional mandate mm. to create those offices. And therefore, it did it procedurally. And in fact, uh, I am not a lawyer, but where we are talking about breaching the constitution, really uh, a, a layman's interpretation, mm. no clause of the constitution has been breached. Positions have been created in the public service commission in a very clean process. And, and uh, uh, if, 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 an, if we talk about the role of the presidency, and allow me for purposes of uh, sharing with Honorable Theory here, is that uh, the constitution is clear that the president uh, may uh, perform any other executive function provided for in this constitution or in national legislation and except as otherwise provided for in this constitution may establish an office in the public service in accordance with the recommendation of the Public Service Commission in accordance with the recommendation okay. of the Public Service Commission. Monica Mbaru, mm. uh, who gave the ruling at the Employment and Labor Relations Court, must have consulted this clause very, very well. And therefore, this provision gives any president the mandate to create such offices, uh, that notwithstanding, okay. for purposes of efficient running of the administration and, and, and government. And, and so the issues of uh, the question of constitutionality really, really here okay. does not arise. I, I, because I, I, these I are positions you. being created. And today, and the positions may not necessarily be 23. If the president or if the Public Service Commission finds that maybe they need mm. another 50 chief administrative secretaries for purposes of delivering. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot talk of cutting spending and you're not delivering. You see, input and output must be correlated. Mm -hmm. If you are putting resources that are not yielding much value to the people, then it's a loss. And and so, this thinking, which has been worked, which has been working over the last five years, precedent has been set, and uh, Justice Mrima was right in his, and he applied his mind very well that instead of uh, abolishing mm -hmm. these offices. Mm. Uh, I grant a stay so that it can be regularized to meet the threshold of the law and allow the Public Service Commission to do it. And I think that has been done. Okay. Uh, listening to Counsel Sigay uh, and any lawyer, any reasonable lawyer who is unbiased, will tell you that uh, these three conflicting judgments, a square one in the Employment and Labor Relations Court that eventually created the 51 CSS domiciles at the state departments of all government ministries and uh, the direction of Justice Mrima and uh, the ruling of yesterday. Mm. These are three conflicting judgments. And the ruling of yesterday lacks a lot of information in terms of government administration, government function, and is looking at CESS differently. And it, it, its reasoning is premised okay. differently. And I would challenge uh, the URI. Uh, if really he still had issues with the creation of CESS, then he should have filed 
an appeal at the Court of Appeal immediately and instantly. Okay. Uh, but uh, he kept quiet. He has uh, not uh, challenged uh, up to date. And, and, and so, legally speaking so, and sorry, constitutionally allow speaking... Allow me to circulate the question to the rest of the panelists because, you see, yes, you're saying that uh, President Theory did not appeal, but this was an active matter. Uh, I mean, this was a matter that was before the High Court and the three-judge bench has made a decision. So we are dealing with a substantive decision also of the High Court. No, in yeah. terms of timing, Kituku, so yeah. that we get things right. Yeah. Because it's important we package facts mm -hmm. for Kenyans. Go ahead. The Employment and Labor Relations Court dispensed of the application by the URI sometimes in November. Mm. And uh, that matter rested. And that is why the Public Service Commission was mandated to proceed with the process. And uh, uh, these are the applications, these are the applications at the High Court. These are the applications at the High Court yeah. came up on the 17th of March. So really, but he also you said, look at time span. He also said that a constitutional issue has to be handled at the High Court, uh, not at the Employment and Labor Relations No, court. that's not right. It's misleading. is <laughs> trying to okay, mislead tell me the that viewers. You, what's supposed to happen? All courts have powers, and the Employment and Labor Relations Court has jurisdiction to interpret whether matters are constitutional right or not. They, they, they have equal jurisdiction, and if indeed, so are you saying if, this if indeed, if yes, it's, a, it's a the wrong court, and uh, it was in the wrong court, and we challenged the so jurisdiction. So what should happen? Uh, what should what have should happened happen the is that the division. matter, the matter, should have been filed at the Court of Appeal. No, I'm asking you, what should and happen... And appeal against the Social employment Police. and labor relations. What should court? happen at the constitutional division of the High Court? The, the, the matter, in fact, the URI and his group, if really they felt that it was... Uh, the, the matter rested squarely at the constitutional division, they should have filed at the constitutional division. But it involves... Okay. It involves employment and creation of jobs. Okay. Employment and creation okay. of jobs is a mandate of Employment and Labor Relations about, Court, which about, also is created by the Constitution. matters of constitutionality of decisions of the President and the Executive? That rests with the Supreme Court. <laughs> Okay. And the Supreme <laughs> Court was created for oh, that oh, oh, purpose. Right. I hear you. But um, at, the, at the lower courts, no, 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 no. but at the lower no, no. courts, no, no. all the courts have equal jurisdiction I, to exercise their mandate. No, the president. So, but you see, right now we have got three <laughs> conflicting judges. will find you for calling yes. High Court a lower court. <laughs> no, no. Not going to find me. Not going to find me. Because then you know. I've been a very good user of the no, court. That's so. a light note, Honorable Sassian. Yeah. Uh, President uh, Theory, tell me, because I mean, there's all this confusion, and I had the judges say that um, 